Hi guys. Got another Tuesday workout to get you into today. Hopefully only more than a couple of these before we've actually got you back in the gym. You can do these sessions in here. The plan for the session today is to split it into three sections. So you've got every minute on the minute for eight minutes here, every minute on the minute for eight minutes there, and then the final part is an AMRAP. So that's just going through as many rounds as you can within eight minutes. And you've got these two minute rests that separate each section in there. These first two couplets that you've got in here, 12 to 20 press ups on the first minute, 12 to 20 ice skaters in the second minute. Remember for anything where you work on one leg, so the ice skaters, the deadlifts, and the suitcase deadlifts here, the numbers are total. So that 12 to 20 there could be read as 6 to 10 on each leg. Remember with these couplets here, because it's every minute on the minute, that means you've got a minute to do 12 to 20 press ups, and then you've got a minute to do 12 to 20 ice skaters. So you don't want to move on to the next section until the four minute has been completed. With that in mind, particularly on the press ups I'd say, just make sure that you're probably not going beyond the 45 second mark on them. Uh, we want to make sure you are getting a little bit of rest in at the end of each minute. And I think a lot of that will come from whether or not you choose the right scaling option. And ideally we want you to be fairly consistent on the number of reps that you're able to get in. Same applies on the second couplet here. So you've got 12 to 20 V6 in there and 12 to 20 single leg deadlifts. So again, that could be six to 10 on each side. So you've got the rest, and then remember this last part is just gonna be an eight minute rolling clock. So it's gonna be eight minutes, 10 minutes, 18, 20. So you'll go through to 28 on the final part. And you're just going through these four exercises as many times as you can. So you've got the press ups again, ice skates again, sit ups, and then suitcase deadlifts in there. So the main thing we want on these is just making sure that choosing scaling options you can get done within the amount of time. And then this part here, you can just go for it and get as many rounds in as you can. With the exercises that are in there, remember with the press-ups, you can split progressions if you want to, so it doesn't have to be all of one or all of the other. You could potentially do some of them as full press-ups like that, and then you could do some of them with your knees on the floor, and you can vary it up. It doesn't have to be all of one or all of the other. With the ice skaters, remember for those, we're looking for you to set up on the one leg, and it's a sideways jump across your body like that and obviously the, the distance you're jumping will partially I imagine be related to how much space you've got available to you but also how much power you can get in the legs. Ideally we don't want it to be like that, we want to get a decent bit of distance into the jump. If you do struggle with ice skates at all, particularly in terms of the balance, they can always be a reverse lateral lunge so you can set up, step around and behind like that and that might be a nice alternative but that's only if you do find the balance side of things hard on those ice skaters. With the V-sits that are in here, so you full V-sit, we're looking to try and get the whole body to come up together. So we're trying to go up, arms and legs straight and tuck into your top position. If you want to scale that, you could do it one leg at a time. Could do tuck ups as well, or they could just be sit ups. See that all of them look pretty similar. We're looking for similar things technique-wise on all of them. It's about getting into that tuck position with your abs. It's not just me throwing my arms and my legs together, starting like this and throwing everything forward, but I'm really trying to crunch into that top position and really engage and work my abs. So again, on that, you want to be making sure that whatever progression you choose for that, you're able to get the number of reps you're doing done, hopefully in about 45 seconds, give or take. Your single leg deadlifts, we're looking for you to set up on one leg, believe it or not. And from there, you're coming down into this position and back up to standing. So it's like an RDL motion, except that you're just doing it on the one leg. I would advise people not to try and reach down towards the floor. Generally what tends to happen if people do that is a lot of the movement comes from the back and the hips don't really necessarily do anything. I would try and keep your arms to your side to some extent and try and get all the movement from this area of your body, so you're almost cutting yourself in half and going over like that, rather than reaching down to the floor, like I want to pick something up. If you find them fairly easy, you could always add a little bit of weight to that. So you can take a weight, you can either hold it in one hand, or you could hold it in two, and that would be the exact same motion, the exact same technique, but it's just a little bit harder because you've got a bit of weight in there, so that is an option with them. The sit-ups that are in there, so it's the same as what I was saying with the scaling, you'll probably be able to move through them pretty quickly, but just make sure you get a full range of movement every time. 
For suitcase deadlifts, what more appropriate exercise now that there could be holidays on the horizon, you'll need a lot of practice for this. So that's going to be you set up with a weight on one side and you're going down into your deadlift, but just with the weight on one side. So same deadlift technique as normal, you're trying to use your legs and your hips to get you up and down, but you've got weight on one side rather than both. The main thing we want to try and avoid here really is just sort of tipping over to the side like that. We want to see if you can stay relatively level, you probably tip a little bit, but not get pulled away over to the side like that. And remember, like we said before, they're going to be ten on each side. If you're in a position where on this last part, the sort of weights you've got available to you aren't that challenging, just try and move through it quickly. I think it's the last little bit, so you can just try and absolutely blast through it and go for it. In terms of a warm-up, just got that set up there. So obviously, with the weight set up, the main thing I want to worry about is getting you warmed up for this first part. By the time you get to here, you're probably going to be pretty warm. So you've got the shoulder swings in there. They could be big swings, going backwards like that. Could be swinging out across the front of your body, whatever you fancy on them. And then the reverse lateral lunges are the scaling option I showed you for the ice skaters. So it's stepping side and behind like that. You've got shoulder taps in there. So set up in your press-up position, hand to opposite shoulder. The knee raises that I've put in is from your front-leaning rest position, like that. And then you've got your press-ups and your ice skaters in at the end there. Once you've done that, you should be fairly warm. What I would also advise doing, once you've finished what's on the board there, is have a go at some of the exercise you're in here. So particularly the V-sits, these deadlifts, and these deadlifts. And just make sure you have a good idea of what progression you want to do. We don't want you jumping in and doing one that's too hard or too easy on the first round and, and kind of wasting that round. Try and make sure you know what's going to be an appropriate scaling option before you start. So then once you get going, you can just get stuck in and you don't have to worry too much. But particularly on these every minute on the minute ones, that the scaling is going to be really important for whether or not you're able to finish in a reasonable time. As always with these workouts, if you've got any specific questions or anything that I've not gone over as part of this video, please get in touch with me or one of the other coaches and we can hopefully give you some more specific advice. But otherwise, all being well, see you in a couple of weeks. Let's see you for another video next week as well.